Today's Mass is offered for Kathleen and Joseph Brett. I saw the holy city, a new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared like a bride adorned for her husband. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask the Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who from the living and chosen stones prepared an eternal dwelling for your majesty, increase in your church the spirit of grace you have bestowed, so that by new growth your faithful people may build up the heavenly Jerusalem. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. You're reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The angel brought me back to the entrance of the temple, and I saw water flowing out from beneath the threshold of the temple toward the east. For the facade of the temple was toward the east. The water flowed down from the southern side of the temple, south of the altar. He led me outside by the north gate and around to the outer gate facing the east, where I saw water trickling from the southern side. He said to me, This water flows into the eastern district down upon the Arabah. It empties into the sea, the salt waters which makes fr- which it makes fresh. Wherever the river flows, every sort of living creature that can multiply shall live, and there shall be abundant fish. For wherever this water comes, the sea shall be be made fresh. Along both banks of the river, fruit trees of every kind shall grow. Their leaves shall not fade, nor their fruit fail. Every month they shall bear fresh fruit, for they shall be watered by the flow from the sanctuary. 
Their fruit shall serve for food, and their leaves for medicine. The word of the Lord. A response, the waters of the river gladden the city of God, the holy dwelling of the Most High. The waters of the river gladden the city of God, the holy dwelling of the Most High. God is our refuge and our strength, and ever-present help in distress. Therefore, we fear not, though the earth be shaken, and the mountains plunge into the depths of the sea. The waters of the river gladden the city of God, the holy dwelling of the Most High. There is a stream whose runlets gladden the city of God, the holy dwelling of the Most High. God is in its midst, it shall not be disturbed. God will help it at the break of dawn. The waters of the river gladden the city of God, the holy dwelling of the Most High. The Lord of hosts is with us. Our stronghold is the God of Jacob. Come, behold the deeds of the Lord, the astounding things he has wrought on earth. The waters of the river gladden the city of God, the holy dwelling of the Most High. Today's second reading is a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, you are God's building. According to the grace of God given to me, like a wise master builder, I laid a foundation, and another is building upon it. But each one must be careful how he builds upon it, for no one can lay a foundation other than the one that is there, namely Jesus Christ. Do you not know that you are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy that person. For the temple of God, which you are, is holy. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia. I have chosen and consecrated this house, says the Lord, that my name be there forever. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Since the Passover of the Jews was near, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. He found in the temple area those who sold oxen, sheep, and doves, as well as the money changers seated there. He made a whip out of cords and drove them all out of the temple area with the sheep and oxen and spilled the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. And to those who sold doves, he said, Take these out of here and stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples recalled the words of scripture, zeal for your house will consume me. And this the Jews answered and said to him, what sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered and said to them, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews said, This temple has been under construction for 46 years, and you will raise it up in three days? 
but he was speaking about the temple of his body. Therefore, when he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they came to believe the scripture and the word Jesus had spoken. The Gospel of the Lord. Today, the church doesn't celebrate the usual feast of an angel or a particular saint. Today, we celebrate a building, a church, the historic St. John Lateran Basilica of Rome. This is an important building because it was donated to the church by the Roman Emperor Constantine after he legalized Christianity in the Roman world. Most of the major persecutions of Christians had stopped at this time. And literally overnight, by the single donation of land and real estate, the church became one of the most powerful institutions in the world. The St. John Lateran Church in Rome became the papal estates. This is where the Pope resided for centuries. This was the Pope's Basilica, and it is still today. It is said that every single Pope offered Mass on the altar of this church, even St. Peter. So St. John Lateran being the first major church to be dedicated, is called the Mother Church of Christendom. Why is this feast important? It is important because Christ established a visible church. Some people will argue that Christ did not intend to establish a visible church, or that the apostles were somehow wrong. But the truth is that without a visible church and without these church buildings, it would be very difficult to first gather for divine worship and also advance the gospel message of salvation. In my refutation to those who advocate and and for an invisible church that is a quote-unquote spiritual church, I asked them, do you really believe that the gospel would have reached your ears if the church was invisible, scattered, and unorganized? I don't think any institution would be able to thrive let alone survive like that. That's why our blessed Lord established a visible church with a visible head, the Pope. It is important for us to gather, to come together as a family, to worship Almighty God. We are a church of communion, not just by gathering and worshiping together, but also we are in communion with each other in mind and heart, professing one faith, one Lord, one God and Father of all. And most importantly, we are a church in communion with Almighty God. Everything is preserved and held together in a visible and organized church. Most Protestant churches aren't. That's why you have so many, and so many different ideas and interpretations. Our Lord knew if we were to be one in unity, we needed to be a visible and organized church. 
And there's another component in today's feast. When we look back at biblical history, we see that when God wanted to be present with his people, he asked for a place of honor and reverence to dwell. We see this with the tent of the Holy of Holies in Exodus and with the temple of King Solomon, built to resemble the Holy of Holies. The temple was a place of reverence and honor for Almighty God. It was a place of prayer. That's why Jesus rightfully got angry with what was going on in his father's house, what we heard in the gospel today. So let's think about this very truth. Every time we enter a church building, that we are entering the very presence of Almighty God in the most blessed sacrament. This is not a place to socialize and meet up to see friends and buddies. This is a place to encounter Almighty God and to worship Him. This is God's house. This is where He dwells. And that's why everything we do during liturgical celebrations is so important. It's important that we worship well. And finally, from the church flows every grace, grace upon grace. We heard in the first reading the description of the temple where the blood of the animals sacrifices and the water of purification and cleansing flow down from the side of the temple. So too does the blood and water from Christ's own pierced side flow from the church to benefit us and the rest of the world. In order that he can rebuild the temples of our bodies that we have, that he referred to, to be saved and to be with him forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, we pray, O Lord, the offering made here, and grant that by it those who seek your favor may receive in this place the power of the sacraments and the answer to their prayers. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. 
lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in your benevolence you are pleased to dwell in this house of prayer in order to perfect us as the temple of the Holy Spirit, supported by the perpetual help of your grace and resplendent with the glory of a life acceptable to you. Year by year you sanctify the Church, the Bride of Christ, foreshadowed in visible buildings, so that rejoicing as the mother of countless children, she may be given her place in your heavenly glory. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, 
we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your Church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Salvatore, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
be built up like living stones into a spiritual house, a holy priesthood. A prayer for a spiritual community for those watching from home. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I, des I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. O God, who chose to foreshadow for us the heavenly Jerusalem through the sign of your church on earth, grant, we pray, that by our partaking of this sacrament, we may be made the temple of your grace and may enter the dwelling place of your holy glory. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace.